I'm Brenda Caldwell, a.k.a. Dr. B. Welcome to the Hope Zone, moving you from a place of hopelessness and brokenness to a place of healing and wholeness, a place where hope is alive to bring you more peace, more joy, more freedom, and more understanding of your God-given purpose. Let's enter the Hope Zone. Hi, and welcome in to another edition of The Hope Zone with me, Brenda Caldwell, a.k.a. Dr. B. I am telling you, you're joining on the right day at the right time with the right vessel. It's about to go down. In The Hope Zone, you are entering a place where there is hope for every situation. And if you are a brand new listener, I'm excited about you. I'm so grateful. I always do this podcast for the one and and today you are my one it's the holiday season yes it is christmas time yes it is the birth of our lord and savior jesus christ the coming of our lord and savior the king jesus during this time and so we're talking about joy today yes we're talking about how joy is a choice so don't give it away joy is a choice so don't give your joy away. So I want you to get ready for that. And again, I upload a new podcast every Monday. So you can uh, subscribe to the podcast so that you can get that upload. Of course, share the podcast as well. I thank you so much. I thank you for tuning in and listening uh, today. And I just believe there's a timely word because joy is something that as we get ready to talk about it, it's something that is a gift. It is most certainly a choice and it's something that the world doesn't give to you and the world cannot take it away. Joy. Oh my goodness. So, all right, let's get started today as we talk about joy and how joy again is a choice. So don't give it away. Let's talk about what joy is and the difference between joy and happiness. So happiness is a powerful uh, gift as well. Happiness basically is based on more so uh, external things. When something is happening, it can make us happy. You know, you win the lottery, you are happy. Uh, you graduate from college and finally get that degree, you are happy. You know, we're happy when we get a new house. We're happy when we buy a new car. We we're, we're, tend to be happy based on something happening. So when there's something external going on in our life outside, uh, we uh, tend to get happy. It tends to be based on circumstances uh, uh, that, uh, that causes us to be happy. We're happy with this. We may be happy with that. We may be unhappy because something is not happening uh, kind of thing. So when you talk about uh, happiness, again, it's basically something external, something that uh, we can see that pretty much has happened uh, that uh, em- emotes any uh, uh, it, 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 it uh, creates an emotion uh, in us called happiness but joy I want to read a couple of definitions of joy uh, that I think would uh, that you would appreciate we talk about joy because joy springs up uh, from the inside. But let's let's get this uh, uh, definition if you are taking uh, notes uh, today. So this says that joy is a feeling of great pleasure. A feeling of great pleasure would be joy. But the true definition of joy goes beyond that limited explanation that uh, the uh, dictionary gives us. So uh, true joy would be this. It's a limitless, life-defining, transformative reservoir waiting to be tapped into. Let me say that again. I really like this definition of joy. It says true joy is a limitless, life-defining, transformative reservoir waiting to be tapped into. It requires the utmost surrender and like love is a choice to be made. Did you get that? Joy is a choice to be made. Like love is a choice. We choose to love. Well, we choose to have joy. This 
limitless, life-defining, this reservoir, this transformative reservoir uh, waiting to be tapped into is what uh, is a more um, extensive definition of joy. But we're going to break it down and see what the Bible also says about joy. Joy is one of the fruits of the Spirit. Uh, which is named in uh, Galatians 5.22, joy is a fruit of the spirit. It's comforting, content, and full of peace. It's an enduring attitude of the heart and the spirit and is a natural part of the Christian faith. It is often connected to, but not limited to, following Jesus and pursuing the Christian life or being a follower of Christ. So in other words, joy is most often connected to having a heart and an attitude as a, a Christ follower. So the more we are connected to Jesus, the more the fruit of his character, uh, the, there are nine fruit of the spirit. Uh, joy is one of those nine fruit, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness. We'll have to do a whole study on the uh, fruit of the spirit uh, in Galatians 5.22. But joy is one of the first ones named joy, joy. It's comforting, it's being content, and it's being full of peace. It's this attitude of heart and of spirit. It's just, it's an abiding spirit that allows you to just reflect Christ. Uh, a person who has joy is a person who is going to reflect the, the character of Christ. Just it's just an inexplainable thing, but it is the, it's the truth. You know, if you if you if you have true joy, it's going to flow outward. People are going to see. Uh, your, it, it's going to come out in your heart. It's going to come out in your conversation. It's going to come out in your mannerisms. It's just going to flow out. And it's basically saying here, the more you are connected, if you will, to Jesus, the more joy will show up in your life. Wow. I love that. I, I love that because it's really true. Psalm 1611 says it like this. It says, in your presence is the fullness of joy, and at your right hand there are pleasures evermore. Uh, it first starts out saying, you will show me your path of life, the path of my life, Father. You will show me the path of, your, of my life. And then it says, in your presence is the fullness of joy. My goodness, fullness of joy. I remember years ago when I was a a teenager, and uh, we would go to church. And I remember those days that my mom would be in church, and she would just start crying. And and and, and she would, I would say, "Mom, what's wrong with you? You know, are you okay, Mama?" And she would just, she would just say, "I'm just full. I'm just full." And I didn't really know what that meant back then but I know what she means now. She was in the presence of God and all she could say was, I'm just full. But she was crying happy tears. In other words, she was really saying, I am full of the joy of Jesus. I'm just, I'm just full of his joy. I'm so full. I can't even speak words. Oh my God. Have you ever felt like that? Have you ever just been in God's presence and you couldn't even speak? Oh God. Oh, God, but I feel your presence even now. Have you ever just been in his presence and, 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 and you, you, you just felt his presence so strong in that moment that you, you really couldn't even speak? All you could do is cry. You couldn't even get words out. That, that's the fullness of joy. Wow. The fullness of joy. He says in his presence. Is the fullness of joy, my God, inexplainable, something that money can't even buy. Oh my God, money can't. Money can buy some happiness. It can, but it can't buy the joy. 
because joy springs up. It's, it's, an, it's a limitless reservoir, if you will, that flows from the inside. You can be in a situation, come on, that's difficult outside, but still have joy on the inside. Help me somebody. You're my one today. And there's my one and it's the holiday season. And there's, there's so much that comes with the holiday. There's, there's pressure to buy gifts. There's pressure to go to these holiday parties. There's pressure to, to, to you know, to, to meet expectations. Sometimes even of our children, you got to, you know, be here and be there and buy this and buy that. But listen, don't let the holiday stress you out. Mm -mm. I talked last week about maintaining your mental health, taking care of your mental health during the holidays. One of them, one of the ways that we maintain our mental health is, come on, tap into the reservoir of joy. And that joy springs up most often and most easily from being in the presence of God through the prayer time that you have, through the time of studying the word, the time of just putting on some, some, some beautiful worship music or setting the atmosphere in your home, whatever you do uh, to invoke joy again in his presence is the fullness of joy. You can begin to start uh, telling God the things that you're thankful for and what you're grateful for and what you appreciate about him. And you, you'll be amazed. Joy will begin to spring up on the inside. Joy. Let me tell you something. There's a powerful uh, 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 scripture, a passage of scripture uh, found in John chapter 16. In John chapter 16, Jesus was preparing uh, to uh, leave. He was preparing the disciples for his departure. We uh, must remember that Jesus came. He was God in the flesh, and he was only in the earth for an appointed time, and his time was drawing near. He was preparing, uh, if you will, for the Garden of Gethsemane. He was preparing to go to the cross, but he was trying to uh, prepare the hearts of his disciples that he would be leaving them soon. They they just did not understand Jesus having to leave. Well, Jesus, knowing that it was causing grief to them, and he said, he said, I know uh, that this causes grief. He said there in John 16, 22, though, he said, your joy, mm, he says, my time has come. I know it shall cause grief, and I know that you have sorrow. And right after that, he says, but your joy, no man take it. He said, your joy, no man take it. No man can take your joy. Jesus was saying to the disciples, in other words, don't even let my departure from you take away your joy. He says, your joy is a premium. Come on, somebody. Your joy is something that the enemy is after every day. He said, but your joy, he said, don't let any man, don't let circumstances take your joy. Don't even let me being the savior of the world, having to depart. It's, it's expedient that I go. He was talking to them about the comforter of the Holy Spirit preparing to come. He had to leave in order for the comforter to come. So they didn't quite understand that. And he knew that, but he was letting them know, nevertheless, don't let your joy be taken. Don't let your joy be taken. In other words, he's saying your joy, no man, no human can take your joy. A person can't take our joy. In other words, so since no one can take your joy, don't give it away. Oh, hush your mouth. Say it again. Your joy, nobody can take your joy. So don't give your joy away. This world that we live in, circumstances can take our joy if we give it away. Are you with me? People can take our joy if we give them that power to. People can walk out of our life and now all of our joy is gone. Come on. We can lose our money. Now all of our joy is gone. People can not, no longer want to be our friend. Now all of our joy is gone. Come on, somebody. Somebody can decide to divorce us. Now all of our joy is gone. Listen, no man 
No human has the power to take our joy. We have to make a decision, a choice to give our joy away. So we're talking today and saying that joy is a choice. So don't give it away. Ooh, joy is a choice. So whatever you do, don't give it away. Don't give away your joy. Don't give away your joy. Your joy, you can be in a a very stressed out situation. You can be, you can not have money, but you can still have joy. Oh my God. You can, you can be in a situation where everybody's rejecting you and, 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 and not wanting to, 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 to support you and, or, or, or what have you, and you can still have joy. Come on. You can be the only one in your office. Come on, somebody in your work environment that, uh, that has a good attitude. Everybody else may be grumpy and mad and complaining and criticizing and, and, you know, and they're, they're they're, they're, they're criticizing this season, but th this holiday season, but you can still have joy. Ah, no man can give, no person can take your joy. So don't give your joy away. You want to make a decision not to give your joy away. Every day that we get to live, we have the opportunity to choose certain things. You can choose how you feel. You can choose how you think. You get to choose how, what you eat. You get to choose what you wear. You can choose. Come on, somebody. You get to choose certain things that you're going to do every day. And one of the things that you get to choose, you get to choose whether or not you're going to have joy. Come on. You can choose joy. You can choose joy. I want you to stop right now and say, I choose joy. Say it again. I choose joy. It just feels good when you say it out of your own mouth. I choose joy. See, nobody can take anything from you. You can say, I choose to have joy. Come on. Yes, that's right. Joy is a premium. It's one of those precious gifts. Uh, two, two premiums that the enemy is after every day. One is peace and the other is joy every single day. So I want to look at a few scriptures here and see what the Bible says about joy. I love it. I love it. I love it. In Pro Proverbs 17, 22, it says, a joyful heart is a good medicine. Ooh, did you hear that? A joyful heart is a good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries the bone. So listen, if you're going to be flourishing with good health, mm, 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 you want to have joy. A joyful heart is good like a medicine. So you want to keep your joy. It, it keeps your body healthy. It does. It keeps your mind healthy. It keeps your soul healthy. When you choose to have your joy, that's a powerful thing. In John 16, 24, a little bit uh, more about John 16, he says, until you have, he says, until now you have asked nothing in my name. This is Jesus saying, Jesus said, ask and you will receive that your joy may be full. Oh my God. Jesus said, ask. He says, until now, you've not even asked me for anything. He says, ask and you will receive that your joy will be full. That is amazing. He wants us to ask him for anything. And he wants us to know that even as we ask, we can remain full of joy mm, because joy allows you to have an expectation. Come on. Joy allows you to believe God for the best. Believe God for something good. Joy. When you have joy, it just keeps you in the right frame of mind to expect something good. And it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to have that kind of joy. And, and James uh, 1, 2, it says, count it all joy, brothers and sisters, when you meet trials and various trials of various kinds. When you fall in various kinds of, of trials and, and temptations and things like that, he said, count it all joy. Just learn how to count. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. We're going to have trials of life. He says, count it all joy. <laughs> life will be up. Life will be down. Come on, somebody. He says, count it all joy because all things will work together for you good. Come on. Romans 8, 28 reminds us of that. I love what God's word says. In Philippians 4, 4, it says, rejoice in the Lord. How often? Always. He says, again, I say rejoice. He just reminds us, 
and rejoice is just another way of saying, come on, continue to have joy. Woo, come on here. Continue to have joy. Continue to have joy. Joy is something that we choose. Say it again. I choose joy. Say, I choose to have joy. Say this. I choose joy today. That's it. You choose joy today. You choose joy. Some people choose to wake up. And, and, and this whole thing about waking up on the wrong side of the bed. I say, if you wake up on the wrong side of the bed, get back in the bed and roll over and try it again. Come on, somebody. Are you with me? Because we get to choose our attitude when we wake up in the morning. So if you wake up and you're not feeling well, or you wake up and the enemy is trying to attack you with a, with a negative mindset, or you wake up and you find yourself complaining, you wake up and you find yourself worrying, you wake up and you find yourself criticized, you wake up and you find yourself you know, being negative, listen, come on. Start back over again. Start over and say, no, uh-uh, I'm not giving you that power, devil. I'm not giving you the power to steal my joy today. God is too good. Come on, somebody. There's too much good in my life going on for me not to wake up with joy. Wake up with joy. To wake up with joy. Wake up and say, you know what? I choose to have joy today, and I'm not going to give my joy away. Yeah, I'm not going to give my way, my, my joy away. It's like filling in the blank and saying, blank, you can't have my joy. Come on, somebody. Whatever goes in that blank, you're saying, blank, you can't have my joy. Are you with me? Lack of finances, you can't have my joy. Are you with me? Uh, 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 you know, relationship situation, mm -mm, mm -mm. you can't have my joy. Are you with me? Uh, my child not doing what the, uh, she needs to be doing right now, uh, still not going to have my joy. Are you with me? Blank. You can't have my joy. Joy is something that you choose. Joy is a powerful gift. Joy is something that allows you to just be able to have the, uh, the right spirit, the right heart, a sense of contentment and a sense of peace. And it allows you to, to be able to look for the good in a bad situation. It allows you to, to see good even when there's bad all around you. Listen, this holiday season, you can choose joy. You can choose joy. It doesn't matter if you don't, don't, don't focus on the gifts that you think you want to get. Don't focus on even having to buy a whole bunch of gifts. Don't put pressure on yourself. Be led by the Holy Spirit in what you do for the holiday and, and being a blessing and things like that. But choose joy. Choose to do things that will bring you joy. Choose to stay in God's presence. Stay in his word. Choose to quote the scriptures that build up your spirit. Choose to come and check on somebody and, and share some good news with somebody. Choose joy, joy. Do something simple. Those simple acts of kindness are those the kinds of things that can bring you joy. I promise you, buy somebody's uh, groceries. That'll give you some joy. Buy a dinner for somebody. That'll bring you some joy. It's some, it's some little small, you know, acts of kindness. It is the holiday season. You know, look to be a blessing. You can do some small things. Go and visit somebody that may not otherwise have a visitor. That'll bring you joy. Are you with me? Because those kinds of things bring you into the presence of God. They do. Uh, you know, it, it's just amazing. It is really amazing. The things that we can do that can bring joy into our spirit and joy into our life. But whatever you want to do, you want to choose joy. I, I will never forget probably about 12 years ago now. I remember I went through a trial. It was a terrible trial in my life. I, I just, I was under a lot of stress. I, I had, uh, I literally, I was going through a major stress in my business. I lost a lot of money. I was in debt. I was really overwhelmed. I was, uh, it was a stressful time in my life. I'll never forget it. And during that time I did, I gave away my joy. I didn't have joy. I remember I was, I was really down. I was really, I was not myself. I was sad. I was, I was, I was overwhelmed to, to be honest with life. And, and I wasn't really smiling. I wasn't laughing. I wasn't, um, I just really wasn't myself. I did. I just, I, I was so sucked in to the cares of this world. When I came out of that trial, 
Because you know, the Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers us out of them all. I learned a valuable lesson. And I, I really did learn John 16, 22 during that time where it says that uh, your joy, no man take it. And I remember I made a decision. I said, I don't care whatever I go through for the rest of my life. I am never again going to give away my joy. I will not give my joy away. And I want you to know as you're listening today, I don't care what you're going through, through in this life. This life can, can, can be tough at times. Uh, you may be going through a tough time during this holiday season. I want you to know, whatever you do, stay close to God and don't give your joy away. There's still a reason to have joy. Just knowing that Jesus loves you is enough to have joy. Just knowing that he got on a cross and, and he died for you is enough to give you joy. Just knowing that God has not forgotten about you is enough to give you joy. Just knowing that as you listen to this podcast, you're listening to someone who is an ambassador of hope. That's what I am. And I'm I'm an ambassador of, of hope and I'm ambassador of heaven and the earth to tell you that you are loved that you are cared for, that you are thought about, that you are special to the Father, that you matter, and that, come on, that God has plans for your life. And I want you to know there's a reason for you to have joy. I decided I was never going to give my joy away, and I think I've been smiling since then. I'm telling you, I've. it's amazing when you decide, when you make a choice and say, I choose joy. I choose joy. You may, you, you don't, you don't have to feel joyful to choose joy. Come on, somebody. You can feel stressed. You can feel bothered. You can feel worried. You can feel all those other emotions, but you can say, mm -mm, I choose to hold on to my joy. I choose to be grateful. I choose to be thankful. I choose to be joyful. That's why I love Romans 12, 12 says rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. He tells us rejoice in hope. As long as Jesus is alive, there's hope. And you know, this is the hope zone. I'm always going to give you a word about hope. And he tells us, he reminds us rejoice in hope and be patient in any kind of tribulation you may be going through and be constant in prayer, be consistent in prayer. And that alone, I promise you, it will get you through what you're going through. And the last scripture I want to share for you, with you for today says, may it's Romans 13, 15, Romans 15, 13, Romans 15, 13 says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, that the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You may abound in hope, 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 hope. When you rejoice in God, it's going to give you peace. Mm. And that peace is going to give you the power to believe in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit helps us to abound in hope. And so joy and hope and peace are all connected. And today, I just wanted to remind you, no matter what's going on this holiday season, hold on to your joy. Keep your joy. Don't you give your joy away. Mm -mm -mm. It's a choice. And you can allow yourself to have the kind of joy that allows you to be a light in a dark world. And that's what we need. We need more people to be a light and to let your light so shine before men. They see your good work and they glorify your father in heaven. And if you're going to be a light, in any kind of way, you got to, come on, you got to release joy out of your spirit. You got to have a smile on your face. You got to be willing to hug. You got to be willing to embrace. You got to be willing to be kind. You got to be willing to somehow reflect the character of Christ. That kind of joy is contagious, contagious rather than hit a rub off on other people. So I decree and declare, and I speak upon you that the joy of the Lord will fill your spirit. The joy of the Lord will get on you and that that joy of the Lord be up so uh, upon you that you're able to give your joy away and keep your joy. Don't give your joy away. Don't give your joy away, but you'll be able to have enough to share, if you will, with others. 
come on somebody in a way that would let people know that God truly is real. So hold on to your joy. Hold on to your joy. Don't let the cares of this life, don't let the cares and the situations during this holiday cause you to give your joy away. Well, that's a word episode. Come on, we're just, we're getting it down. We're getting it out. Episode 37, episode 37 here at the Hope Zone. I am through today. Listen, I want you to share the podcast, go to wherever you watch or listen to podcasts and subscribe so that you can get the episode up loaded to you every Monday. For the more on the works of Dr. B, you can go to my website at drbempowers.com, drbempowers.com. I do have a very special campaign going on right now. It is called Suicide is Not an Option. Suicide is not an option. I am on a mission to save as many people's lives as possible with the message that suicide is not an option. If you'd like to donate to that campaign, please go to my website at drbempowers.com for more information and to donate. I would be so, so, so grateful. Until next time, remember in a world that is full of darkness, there's always a reason to have hope. So you know what I want you to do? I want you to hold on to hope like it's a piece of rope. Until next time. I'm so glad you made it to the end of the podcast. If the Hope Zone is making a positive difference in your life, please subscribe to the show so you don't miss the next episode. Leave a review and most of all, share it with your friends. And remember, from your worst day to your best day, there's hope in every situation.